Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be discussing partially resident textures, also known as tiled resources. Now, I'm sure many of you will be aware that this feature is definitely pushed on DirectX 11, and therefore the Xbox One. But what some of you may not know is that it's also very supported for the PlayStation 4, and it's also supported for OpenGL as a whole. So we're just going to discuss this a little bit, and just to let you guys know uh, how this works. Indeed, AMD actually support partially resident textures with pretty much any of their Radeon 7000 series, also known, of course, as the GCN architecture or the 1.1 GCN architecture, which, of course, is utilized in the volcanic islands. Now, this is very similar to what has been utilized before with the id Tech engine um, with, say, mega textures, and indeed, John Carmack himself has actually said that he's going to be implementing uh, partially resident textures in Doom 4. So, as I said, both the PlayStation 4 and Microsoft's Xbox One are going to be actually utilizing this hardware technology. This means, in theory, and once again, theory doesn't necessarily mean practice, you could actually have texture sizes up to 32 terabytes. And I'll just say that again because maybe you misheard. 32 terabytes. And that's with a very small memory footprint. Now, obviously, in reality, you won't be able to have 32 terabyte textures because, well, you can imagine the size on disk, but still, it's very cool technology. And, of course, for the Xbox One, it's going to mean that, in theory, you'd be able to store, like, several gigabytes of data, like 6 to 8 gigs, in the Xbox One's ES RAM. Now, of course, there are some caveats. Uh, we were discussing about render targets just the other day, and how, of course, the Xbox One, when you start to even render an 8-bit color depth scene, which I don't really think anyone's going to be utilizing 8-bit depth color, uh, you can start seeing that the frame buffer or the amount of memory required becomes a lot larger. So the Xbox One is definitely going to rely on efficient memory usage. Oh, and just so you guys are clear, the texture size of 32 terabytes would mean 16K by 16K by 8K with 128 bit. This basically means that the local graphics memory can actually act like a hardware managed cache. And so textures will be actually streamed as, for example, let's say you're in a distance and as you close in on a specific object, let's just say, for example, a wall texture, let's just make it really simple. And let's say that um, wall texture has a lot of graffiti on it. Well, what could basically happen is as you become closer and closer and closer to that, the texture resolution will start to increase. Obviously, just like in real life, um, detail you won't be able to see it if you're really far away you know you wouldn't be able to let's just say the the graffiti said rgt just for example um you might, might at a certain distance might not be able to see the actual detail of those letters you may just be able to see that they're blotches of color but as you come in closer of course the detail will start to become um more and more defined depending of course the distance of course depending on how good your eyesight is in the graphics world what happens, of course, is that, generally speaking, you'll have different LODs, level of details, which will basically pop in. Now, this is pretty persistent on the 3D graphics world. For example, um, modelers, and by modelers I mean, for example, those creating uh, models of, say, characters or trucks or vehicles or, you know, whatever in a game world, will actually have several levels of detail. And they will have reduced polygon counts each time. So let's just say, for example, level 1. Let's just make up really easy figures just so we can be clear. Let's say level 1 has 30,000 polygons. Level 2 has 20,000 polygons. Level 3 has 10,000 polygons. Level 4 has 4,000 polygons or 5,000 polygons. In other words, it's a significant difference. And the purpose behind this is to basically reduce the, the workload on the graphics card. So the actual textures are broken up into tiles, hence the term tiled resources. These files are actually really small. They're actually 64, 64, if I can speak in English, kilobytes in size, so really small. And 
Obviously, this gives a great degree of control and flexibility um, in terms of level of detail. So in short, you can actually have varying levels of not only detail, but also um, not all of this texture actually has to be resident, in other words, within the memory at any one given time. In other words, you can just have a partial amount of it, which is really good, for example, if things are obscured or you have certain distances or, you know, you're at certain angles, whatever, you can, you can, you know, kind of guess some scenarios yourself. So the application will actually know which textures to actually upload to the memory. And the PRT, uh, Partially Resident Textures, specific texture fetch instructions in a shader. And they return a failed texel fetch condition if they are sampling a PRT, a Partially res Resident Pixel, which is not currently within the pool of memory, then that information is actually stored in a render target. And then it'll basically say, okay, well that textile fetch is failed and it will actually have a specific location. In other words, using X and Y coordinates to map the location on screen, it will say, okay, well, this is where it's not located. And then it will copy that to the CPU so the application can then say, okay, well, this is the data that I need. And then the application can choose what to render until the missing data is basically put in place. So basically, the minimum level of detail warning is specified by the application. And it's using this on a per texture basis. This is really important. Um, it'll basically figure out that if a pixel or if basically if a value is below what the level of detail should be in that area then it will basically trigger a warning and then it will refresh and put in a new one so let's say that you're zooming in let's say you're at a distance and then you're say using a sniper rifle and so suddenly you use a sniper rifle and you're zooming in really close to an object to the game you're coming in closer now some game engines don't actually realize that you're actually getting closer. They they still see the game. I don't know if you've noticed this in a lot of uh, current generation, but they still see it from your point of view. So in short, you're basically zooming in on crappy detail. Um, and so as now you're getting closer, basic and the reason behind this, one of the major reasons is so that it doesn't overload the memory. So if you're now zooming in, it can actually start to load in much higher resolution textures as you're zooming in closer. So what it will basically do, and this is a pure example, um, using AMD's own example, the application, so whichever game, will actually allocate a partially resident texture, whatever resolution, so 16,000 by 16,000, and it will be using the, the partially resident texture API, application programming interface. So the shader will fetch the PRT, the partially resident texture data, at a specific location known as TEX chords, that's T-E-X chords, and then it'll basically have two possibilities. The first possibility is that the textual data does indeed belong uh, in the location. So it's everything's great and wonderful in the world. So a valid color is returned, and so no error. In other words, it's fine. The So that's the if, but the or, if in programming terms, would be the it points to a non-resident tile or a specified level of detail. So in other words, it's saying, okay, that doesn't exist, or it's in a level of detail which is sub what we actually want. So what it will do is it will return a warning depending on which answer it is. And so it'll return an error code and then the application will read that and say, okay, this is the error code, this is what I need you to do, and then the application itself will tell it what um, is then required for it to move forward. Now, because this is all hardware, it means that it eliminates the complexity and limitations of basically software solutions. It will include full anstropic filtering, so obviously textures look even better, and 
even better still is that it's full hardware speed filtering. So that's pretty awesome. It is worth noting, however, that you shouldn't just put everything into partially resident textures. It's actually quite, it can be quite a toll to do so. So, as I said, they have been well implemented in OpenGL, as well as DirectX, and it easily is a retrofit for existing applications. In other words, if your game or code has not already been utilized or utilizing this technology, then it's pretty easy to add this in. There are some current limitations. It's not quite clear if this is going to um, move forward, but uh, at least for the earliest slides I'm reading, it, you can't, no buffer textures or TBOs, but they're saying that there is going to be an extension for that, so for the consoles it's likely fixed. And also there's no depth or stencil textures or MSAA, which is of course a form of anti-aliasing. They say that the virtual address space is extremely large, um, up to hundreds of gigabytes. Obviously this depends quite a lot on various factors such as the rest of the hardware and they do say you will run out of space but it will take a while. Uh, physical memory however is still limited so you know you can still have issues there and draw calls as well can be quite costly and so they may fail. So out of that, now I've done some explaining, I'd like to point out that of course the PlayStation 4 will be finding a use for these. Um, most likely in the future, but it's probably going to be a lot less of a big deal, quite honestly, for the PS4 than it is the Xbox One. The Xbox One is obviously going to become slightly more reliant upon this technology because of the way the memory works. In other words, a slower main system memory, the DDR3, in conjunction with the ES RAM. Um, no doubt, of course, you could do texturing uh, to and from ES RAM as well as using DDR3 for texturing as well. So I imagine there's going to be some specific uses for this. The only problem, of course, just like most things in life, it's highly dependent upon if the game's developers are actually willing and able to implement this technology. Um, I guess we're just going to have to kind of see what happens in that front. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it somewhat informative. I will be resuming my normal services over the next couple of days. And look out, guys, because there's something very cool coming on the next couple of days as well. So anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.